G'day folks, it's Rita from I Would Camp That. Today it's raining a little bit, but that gives us ample opportunity to work on the truck camper interior to get it fully ready for a summer of camping. Today I'm going to be going over how I made curtains and privacy panels both to keep heat in or out and of course to make sure that we have a restful sleep in full privacy. In a video a long time ago I mentioned how I put up these curtains using velcro strips on the inside of the windows facing us as we sleep. As you can see it's just blackout fabric on a velcro backing and I'm just going to be going over how I did these with a physical demonstration and I'm going to be putting up some more privacy panels on more awkwardly shaped windows to make sure that we have full coverage in our camping rig. My supplies list is fairly simple. I have upholstery thread which is much stronger than common cotton thread and you can pick this up at a standard Walmart. Curve needles. Now these are listed as repair needles on their packaging but specifically you need the curved needle. It's a lot stronger and you'll see why it needs to be curved. And the most important thing I found, Velcro. I have both a wide strip of really heavy duty Velcro and I have Velcro dots just to save us on some time later. I've also got pliers, regular old scissors, a thimble, some wet wipes, these are actually rather important, and optionally duct tape. For my demonstration today, yes, I already have curtains up using this method, but I'm going to be sewing another strip of Velcro directly above it so that we can store small things out of the way of when we're sleeping, such as glasses, maybe light flashlights. That way you'll be able to see my technique precisely as I was sewing this on and how you'll be able to use it to put Velcro strips up anywhere else inside your carpeted interior. First thing I'm going to do is actually cut this particular strip of long Velcro in half because I don't need it to be quite this wide. It really depends on how much hold you need, but for a thin strip holding up either curtains or a small amount of accessories, you really don't need that much. And trust me, sewing through this much material is going to hurt. Work smarter, not harder. And that is all we need. Perfect. That should be just right for fitting up here just so you can hang a couple small light accessories. So first you'll need to separate your strips. There we go. Now I prefer to take the hoop end, that's the end that's kind of the hard plastic that has all the little hooks that will attach to the fuzzy end. This is the end that I'm going to sew directly to the upholstery. You'll take off your plastic backing. You'll take off your plastic backing. And then you'll stick it nice and straight, precisely where you want it to go. Now, I know this feels pretty darn secure and it's not going anywhere, and even if you gave it a tug, it's probably not going to move. However, in a couple days, as dust and fiber gets stuck to that adhesive, it's going to lose its grip and it's going to come off, especially if you do have curtains that you're going to be pulling on and off of this. So it needs to be more secure than this, which is where the sewing needle and everything comes in next. All right, so you've got your curved needle and you've got your upholstery thread. If you're a little new to sewing projects, I find that measuring the length of what you need, like the length of your project, times two is usually enough thread for whatever you'll be doing today. All right, you'll thread that on through and tie just a very simple little double knot at the end of your thread. So once you got that knot nice and tight, this is where the fun begins. So for a start, you're just going to press the needle through the Velcro, and because of its curvature, we're not fighting to sew against a flat metal surface. It's just going to curve along the interior of the cabin and pop right out through the upholstery on the other side. Then you just pull it on through, and there you go. You got your first stitch, and then approximately a thumb's width for people that don't do sewing on a regular basis. We're going to do the exact same thing again through the velcro, through the upholstery, and up and out the other side. If the going gets tough, 
That just means that your needle is encountering some resistance going through the upholstery. This is where pliers come in handy so that you can grab the tip of your needle and help pull it out through the other side. There you go. Perfect. And now you'll feel that your needle is kind of gunky. So you grab a wet wipe and just clean all of that adhesive off your needle so that you're not trying to force a sticky needle through on your next stitch and everything will go a lot better. So this project will take you quite a while. It's quite grueling on your hands unless you already have really calloused hands and your back will probably not like having to sit in awkward positions, but the security of this really makes it worthwhile. A couple tips. I've wrapped my fingertips in duct tape to avoid blisters. It's a common trick to avoid blisters when you're walking on, on uh, hiking trails. And honestly, it'll do just fine if you're getting smaller blisters on your hands from other projects. As you've probably noticed, my newest stitching is quite neat with black thread, whereas my previously done curtains have a raggedy white thread. This is actually dental floss. At the time, I did not have upholstery thread and I knew that dental floss is a good deal stronger and because it's waxed, it can glide in and out of the adhesive relatively easily. It's starting to fray a little bit, but it's still nice and strong. So if you don't have upholstery thread, dental floss is a neat trick to do. When you're at the end of your strip, all you have to do is tie a knot right back into your last stitch to make sure that it's not gonna come undone. There we go. Honestly, from the amount of adhesive that you've just been pulling all this thread through, it's going to take quite a bit of work to undo it, but I like to make a little knot at the end just so that I know that it's not going to get pulled out by accident in the future. Now all you have to do is Put your backing back on, and there you go, that'll stay up. Now, I'm not going to pull off the plastic backing for this one because we are literally just using this as a Velcro pocket, so to speak, to keep stuff in. In the future, I might pull the backing off just so that I can put some kind of fabric onto it because otherwise, eventually, this plastic might degrade and the adhesive is just going to be there to pick up dust and stuff anyway. But for now, if we go camping, I can just neatly tuck my glasses right in there. And when I wake up in the morning, I know exactly where they are and they did not get crushed when I rolled over in my sleep. As an aside, while I had my sewing materials out, I literally sewed a tiny little carabiner clip into our ceiling with a micro light little lantern up here. I positioned it so that if we were to sit up from sleep, we're not going to hit our heads off of it. It's theoretically right above where we might be holding a book or a laptop. This way we're not depending on our string lights, which are a little blinding to your partner if they don't want any light, and we're not drawing on the truck battery using the actual camper light. Just this tiny little guy, I believe it takes two little watch batteries, and you can rotate them around and get light wherever you want it with a little frosted exterior so it's not blinding you like a standard LED headlamp. If he swings around a bit too much, we might take him down, but honestly, he's so light he can probably stay up here and he'll be fine. I'll be glad to put this guy into use if I'm trying to read at night. Moving on to the slightly more awkwardly shaped back windows of our camper. I've already taken the liberty of sewing these strips on. As you can see, I've got long strips down the sides and to just to save on time, I merely have little Velcro dots along the top. All these are stitched on using the exact same techniques. The reason I have strips along the side is because we don't want any sort of curtain to bow out towards the center of our camper and allow people to see in through the sides. It's more important that we have a full length of contact down the sides here. The tops and bottoms are really just to make sure that it doesn't fall off or flap loosely in the breeze. So just some Velcro dots to make sure that it doesn't move. We're gonna cut some Reflectix fabric, fit it to these Velcro bits, pull off the backing and boom, we're gonna have privacy panels that can stay up year round and reflect heat in or out as needed. All right, we are in the home stretch. This is the easiest part really and it's honestly quite satisfying. I've got a big roll of Reflectix. Well, honestly, I had to cut two 
strips and then use T-Rex tape right in the middle because it wasn't quite wide enough. As you can see, this is a very generous cut. This is going to definitely cover the window, but this is the easiest way to make sure that it's going to fit without having to worry about precise measurements. I am simply going to take the backing off of our Velcro. We have the fuzzy side that's going to be stuck to our Reflectix. We're simply going to take the backing off and we're going to gently, smoothly lift up the Reflectix and just stick it onto the Velcro and give it a good pat pat to make sure that it's stuck on good and tight. And then we're simply going to feel out a closer fit for the Reflectix and trim the access. Let's get started. as we pat it down onto the sticky sides of the Velcro. As you can see, this was a very generous cut, so we know that we're going to be in contact with the Velcro. Now we just need to do a little bit of eyeballing and we'll make sure that we trim off the excess. I'm just trimming off the excess so it looks nice, but honestly, if it's not in the way of opening the door or anything, you can probably leave it like this. But I like to have it a bit of a closer fit to the window so you can kind of tell where the window is if you need to peel it back and have a look out. So right now the Reflectix is shiny on both sides obviously, but in the summer we want heat to be reflected back out as opposed to our own body heat being reflected back in. So when I have some more time, I'm probably going to affix to this back part here uh, either black tarp or black material just so that it is not allowing our own heat to kind of be reflected back in like a greenhouse. This will certainly do for now. I mean, it's going to be reflecting the worst of the sunlight back out, not letting it in and letting us cook in a little oven. So this will hold up fine right now, but like I said, in the future, I'll put some black material up on here just to further make sure that it is doing as we would like in the, win in the summertime and making sure that it stays nice and cool in here. And there you have it. We have a privacy panel fitted right to our awkwardly shaped little window with no gaps in between. It's gonna reflect sunlight out, and if we must, it's going to reflect our own heat back in, and it's going to make sure that we have comfortable sleeps, and it keeps all of our stuff out of view. But it's not permanent because of the Velcro. With a gentle little tug, you can just pull it on out, see what's outside, check the weather, or if you want to enjoy an evening just kicking back in your camp without leaving the truck, you can still pull these down for some natural light. Isn't that nice? And then you can just pat, pat, back it goes. I hope that you found some information here that possibly helps you out with your own camping videos. I'm glad to have been of help. If you have any further questions or observations or just want to say how your camper has worked for you, drop us a comment below. I'm Rita from I Would Camp That. Stay classy!